we're fortunate right now to have Mike Faber with us, who's from our Grand Rapids Community College Older Learning Learner Center. Not that you're older learners, okay, <laughs> but that um, that it, it fit in so well with some of our other presentations. And he and I were just talking a couple weeks ago about some of the programs that we have. And I said, you know, the people that are attending this workshop be, might be very interested in some of these programs. So um, here's Mike. Thank you. Thank you very much, Bunny. Um, I'm really glad to be here, not only because I'm the only male, <laughs> <laughs> so it's wonderful, but, but just because this is a great opportunity. I like to talk to groups in the community. I'm passionate about the subject of aging and working with an older adult population. Uh, my background, just very quickly, I have a Bachelor of Science in Gerontology, which is a study of aging and the aging process. I also have an undergraduate certificate in mental health and aging. I have a master's degree in sociology specializing in aging in the life course. And I've worked the last 20 years in the community in a variety of ways with older adults, their families, and caregivers. For the last 10 years, I'm celebrating my 10-year anniversary here at the college this month. Uh, I have developed an older learner center. We do educational outreach in the community around aging issues. Uh, we do life enrichment learning for seniors, and that's why I asked Bunny, if she could bump me up, because I'm actually teaching a class on word processing to seniors at 1 o'clock. Um, also, um, I've, I've been actively involved here at the college in development and coordination and teaching in a 32-credit gerontology certificate program, uh, which uh, very fortunately, after a long developmental process, we launched three years ago here at the college. Um, now we're in the next phase of also developing some non-credit learning in the gerontology and aging arena. So um, what I wanted to share with you is just a few things today, and you have a handout in your packet. I don't have a PowerPoint. <laughs> but essentially, uh, what is gerontology? Again, it's the study of aging and the aging process, and it really is about understanding how older adults tick. I, I like what Peggy was saying earlier about, you know, having to sometimes work very closely with the nursing home staff who knew how to work with special needs of older adults. Well, I'm advocating that people from many different disciplines, your own included, uh, needing to learn more about working with this population and how to understand and deal with these issues yourselves. Because we're living in an aging time, we're living in an aging society. I'm sure you've heard of certain terms like the graying of America, okay, the age wave, the age revolution. There's lots of names that have been called to it. But essentially, it's a reality not only in our country but in our world. If we look at a 30-year period in our history here in this country, the average general population of the country grew by 45% in a 30-year period. In that same 30-year period, the population 65 and older grew by 100%. And the population 85 and older, which we call the oldest old, those who generally need the most care, uh, grew by 274%. Now, those trends are not going to decelerate. They're going to accelerate. And the reason for that is the baby boomers. Those individuals born between 1946 and 1964, how many baby boomers in the room? I'm not alone. All right. Woo, power to the baby boomers. The baby boomers. The baby boomers started turning 60 last year at the rate of 10,000 a day. The rate of 10,000 a day. So we're taking over the world once again. We have all the way. All right. Now. The interesting thing about the baby boomers, and you can see different numbers that have been attributed to the baby boomers, anywhere from 76 to 78 million. I'd say it's closer to the 78 million. Um, they're going to continue to accelerate this growth. What does this mean? This means to, to be a person who lives in this country and who works in this country, and I don't care what discipline you go into or what field you work in, you're going to have to have some basic level understanding of older adults and older adult populations, older adult interests, older adult needs. And because I know that Bunny said one of the reasons why many of you are here is because you're starting to think about new and unique ways to use your background uh, as dental hygienists, okay? And the reality is, understanding this population, there are many opportunities for growing new types of businesses, 
in our field of gerontology, it's said that the majority of the jobs in this field are not yet created, have not yet been created. The majority of jobs for someone who has a background like me aren't the kinds of things you're going to find in the newspaper advertised. They're not yet created because this baby boomer population is going to create huge opportunities, especially in the area of entrepreneurship. So if you are someone with an entrepreneurial spirit, there are ways to connect what you're doing today with the needs and issues and wants of these populations in the future. And it's a matter of how you understand that and what you do with that information. So one of the reasons that our gerontology certificate program is, is of interest to many people is because it's a nice program, undergraduate program, to couple with other disciplines that people either may be studying or already have degrees, perhaps even advanced degrees in. I've had everything from bachelor level um, uh, individuals in our program to master's level individuals in our program who ended up working with these populations and saying, hey, I never had any background or education in working with this population and now this is what I'm doing and I love it, but I want to have better background, better information so that I can do a better job and I can have a better, greater understanding of this population I'm trying to serve. So. If we look at the whole population today, those who are 65 and older, and I don't even consider 65 old, okay? But if we look at that population today, the majority of people who work with that population have never had any background whatsoever or education, formal education in aging or gerontology. It's less than 10%, less than 10%. So we have a long way to go, and I'm trying to address some of those needs. And so perhaps some of you are seeing some opportunities here uh, because you're going to live in this society for the rest of your lives. And this is a true growth potential area. Now, on the downside, unfortunately, our society has often devalued human life. All right? If we look at it, the professions that often get the least money are the professions that do service. You know, uh, the work you're doing in the health department, for instance. Okay. The, they're often underfunded, and they don't provide uh, fair salaries in terms of you know, a living wage. And that is very true with an older adult population. If we look at all age groups very often, that's the age group that seems to be the most underfunded. I believe the future is going to change, and it's because of us baby boomers. Baby boomers again, right? All right, we're going to demand it. We're going to demand it. We've demanded many changes throughout history. You think about it. When the baby boomers come along, came along, we as a society had to address many needs. How many schools and parks and community services were established even within church systems? How many uh, adaptations uh, were created from daycare programs to different kinds of ministry programs? The reality is baby boomers are going to continue to demand change. All right, and we need to work together to advocate for that change. But the more individuals we can get educated in this field, uh, out there doing good work, the better we can serve our communities. Okay, So tell you briefly about the two programs we have here right now. And the sheets have more information. And I don't want to stand between you and your lunch, because <laughs> I'm sure you're hungry. All right, um, the first is the 32 credit on the credit side, gerontology certificate program. We developed this program based on national standards. We have a national association called the Association for Gerontology and Higher Education. And although the, we do not have an accrediting body, uh, we do have a national standards which they have uh, developed. And that is how we have created our program here. Um, in the program, um, if you have any previous college experience, which I'm assuming everyone in the room does, um, very often some of the electives or some of the coursework you may have already taken as a requirement like an, uh, an English requirement or some of the elective requirements so for many of you if you wanted to consider this type of credit based program first thing I'd ask you to do is contact me we'll sit down with your transcript and we'll figure out how much you really need to do okay because you probably don't need to do the full 32 credits but we have to evaluate that in that program, we cover a wide range of themes around aging. And uh, I would just say that um, 
It's a multidisciplinary program of study. So we're looking at aging from many different perspectives. Some people say, well, uh, one of the, the groups that we have a lot of students who will participate are nursing students here on campus, which is great. Uh, and some people will say, well, why do I need to do that? You know, this or that course has an aging component built within it. And I would say, again, um, that's one component from one view, from one disciplinary view. Uh, gerontology is very multidisciplinary, and that, that wider perspective is very important to those who are trying to understand and work with the population. So the certificate program, if you want more information, again, you can look online at the college catalog or contact me and I'd be glad to talk to you. Something exciting, and I want to tell you, it doesn't say on here, but it is draft. Uh, the second and third pages, and it kind of copied funny, but the non-credit certificate program in aging. This is a brand new pilot. This information is draft. You're the first ones in the world to see this. Um, we are scheduled to go, but we do not yet have our, our continuing education uh, approvals yet. We are going to have uh, contact hours for both nurses and social workers in this program because most of the people who are actually working in our field today are from those two perspectives. Um, I heard from Bunny, I believe that you can take those contact hours uh, and count at least a certain number of them toward uh, your needs. Um, I would encourage you if you have an interest in this area to look into the non-credit option that we're gonna offer in the fall. What we're gonna do is we're going to, over four months, uh, on the second Saturday of the month, in September, October, November, and December, we're going to do a full Saturday. So it's going to be 8 to 5. There's going to be eight full hours of content that I'm going to do with you in the, in the classroom. It's going to be very interactive, uh, and I think you'll find very, very interesting. And I've laid out for you there the course description for each of the four mini courses and also the learning objectives so you can take a look at it. The first one will be uh, Aging 101, kind of an introduction to gerontology. The second one will be Caregiving 101, um, kind of looking at caregiver issues and needs and the whole issue of caregiving. Uh, the third is Healthy Aging and Chronic Disease Management, which is a very important area in terms of the overall health of our senior population. And the third is Death, Dying, and Bereavement. You cannot work with these populations and not realize and understand that, that you are going to lose some of these people that you grow very close to. And it's important that you understand the process. We live in a death-denying culture, um, and the course is going to be very interactive, and we're going to talk about ways to deal with those kinds of issues and understand them. So if anyone wants any more information on that, my, informa my phone number's there. You can call me um, pretty soon. I'm hoping in the next month or so something will show up online uh, through our continuing education department and you'll be able to register. Any questions at all? I don't want to keep you from lunch. Thank you for letting me be here today. Thank you very much, Mark.